<laughs> Greetings. You have your ticket? You don't have one? No problem, my friend. Just hit the subscription button below. <laughs> Come on in. Hey, guys. Uh, I, I wanted to uh, take a moment and address uh, MGTOW again. I know I've talked about this on a previous video, um, and this is something that's been on my mind, uh, and that I thought that maybe some conversation with the men primarily, but also women who um, are either the men who are embracing MGTOW, men going their own way, simply meaning that instead of a man focusing upon a woman to build with, that he is pretty much just going to look at focusing on men, staying with, with his group, all right? And, um, and for the ladies out there, this is just to kind of give you a heads up, give you some insight, uh, additional insight, at least from one man's perspective, okay? And um, I'm not a junior man. I'm, I'm not an unexperienced man. I'm not a man that does not understand life and what happens in life. And I didn't live my life in a bubble, you know. I traveled around the country and been, been to several places around the world, not from a boasting perspective, it's from a broad perspective, from a perspective of maybe eldership, if you want to call it that, or, or from a wisdom perspective. So in no way am I green. So based off th these opinions are based off of true life tested, you know, uh, situations and also taking time, you know, like any intelligent person would do, you know, for reflection. Think about what you're going to do. Consider the, the consequences before you make your decisions. So let's get to MGTOW. Now, if you're talking about men going your own way, here's the question that I'm going to ask you men. Are you prepared for a future where you do not have ancestry? Are you prepared for a future that you, where you don't have children and grandchildren? Um, are you prepared to be in a situation that 30 years from now, you know what I'm saying? So if you're 30 years old, 35 years from now, do you realize that going your own way means that, you know, you're going to contribute to the to the negative population numbers, all right? Right now, you know, white Americans already have a negative birth rate. In other words, there are more whites dying than whites being born. You know what I'm saying? So, but to the Hebrew is like copper color people. Are you ready for that? Because you're going to journey into that party. If that's the party you want to have, there's room for you in the at the end, so to speak. So are you ready to, to have a negative birth rate? I know some of you guys say, you know, who gives a shit doesn't matter. Well, in 35 years, if you're 30 years old, you can do the math depending on how old you are. Do you realize that a lot of the benefits that you're going to need when you reach 65 or retirement age, it's going to take people pouring into that. In other words, the, the 35, your generation right now, if you're 30, let's just say 25 to 40. Your generation is pulling in for the generation now that's in retirement to be able to have access to uh, services, okay? So the people who are 65 and older, and I'm not in that group, but the people who are 65 and older who are getting any kind of retirement, government assistance related retirement, Medicare, Medicaid, housing, food stamps, any other kind of assistance that you may need because you just couldn't generate enough wealth to be self-sufficient. And I will tell you that most of you guys are not going to be in that position. I'm not being negative about it. I'm just being realistic about it, okay? Um, and if you think I'm wrong, then tell me how many uncles, aunties, grandparents that you have right now that are at retirement age, and this is just a realistic question, that are, at that are right now currently at retirement age. I'm not saying retired because some of them are still working because they, they have to work. If they don't work, they're going to starve to death or be outdoors. So how many that are at retirement age right now that has so much wealth accumulated that they don't need government assistance? I'm going to give you a minute. I'm going to give you 30 seconds. Nah, I'll cut it down to just right now. Because I suspect if you took any time to think about that, more of you that are listening to me have individuals who are in some form of dependence upon the government that are, that have relatives or family members, relatives or loved ones or people that you know, that are 65 and over that are getting this assistance. The only reason they're able to get that assistance is because of your generation. That's where your social security uh, um, taxes are coming in. You know, other forms of taxes that you are paying, you're paying into that. 
Okay, all the money that you pay for taxes, state tax, city tax, you know, uh, federal taxes, all of that money goes into the federal budget. And in that federal budget, there's, there's, there's a portion of that federal budget that's set aside, you know, for individuals, you know, who are at retirement age, but who's going to need assistance to be able not to be homeless, living in the streets, you know, eating cat food. OK, so when you start talking about MGTOW, in other words, men going your own way, that means you that means you're not having you're not having families. OK, you in other words, so you're not in a union with a woman creating babies who are going to be necessary to be able to take care of your ass. Just just, you know how I am. I give it to you straight. So I want you to be thinking about that. And if that's not enough, you know, to to, um, you know, to turn your head to get you thinking, then I want you to ask yourself the question, what would the world be like, you know, in 35 years and there's not enough young men and yet young women to provide other services for you? Basic stuff, cleaning services, you know, um, assistant, you know, taking your places, helping you get to different places, uh, the, those entry level jobs. That, that, that provide a lot of the social needs that you have. Cashiers, you know what I'm saying? I know information technology is going to take a lot of the job, but, you know, I'm just telling you, all of those, those ancillary jobs, the, all of those ancillary things that you're not thinking about right now because you're, you're young and you're strong, and your testosterone is kicking in, and, you know, you listen to a bunch of knuckleheads out there who telling you, you know, that you don't, you know, you don't need. To be with a woman because the women aren't acting, you know, right, which is another subject that we could talk about. I don't necessarily disagree with you in, in regards to some women's behavior. I understand your frustration. I don't understand your necessarily. I don't understand your logic. And I'm not sure you're giving real consideration to that. Again, uh, as I share with you all the time. Google it up. Google up birth rates, debt rates. You know what I'm saying? You you know, and you'll see that you know white America right now are not having babies, and they are very concerned about that. They and they're right to be concerned about that because they understand for this system to work, you have to have people pouring into the system. In other words, to be able to take something out the pot, you got to be putting something in the pot, and that is your young people, your strong people, your healthy people. And let's think in terms of war or battles. What if America is attacked from abroad? Other nations around the earth, at least, you know, what we would call, I don't want to call them third world nations, but other nations who are not considered the West, they're having babies. I mean, they're popping them out like, you know, rabbits. So they're going to have a force. I think Iran and Iraq, I think their average age in Iran and Iraq, I think is somewhere, someone can correct me out there, about 27 years old. The average age for Americans is somewhere in about 35, 36 years old. And right now, we have more people who are baby boomers, those are people who are 60 and older than we have, you know, uh, citizens who are, you know, below that age, a young age. I think I'm saying that right. For the first time in the history of the country, I might add, you got more older people than you have young people. And that number is going to continue to turn. And when you start putting things in like men going your own way, and, and focusing upon, you know, uh, leaving women alone because you can't deal with them or you're going to not deal with them in a way to reproduce. So using contraceptives and contraceptives and things of that nature. So you're still going to have sex, you know, but you're just not going to impregnate them. You're not going to make a commitment to them. And you think that that's going to be a good thing. It's not a good thing. You, you're only what you're doing is is. Um, not only are you 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 you're undermining yourself, but you're creating a situation where that ultimately, um, I guess you're digging your own grave for lack of a bit. I guess that's probably a good way to say that. You're digging your own grave. Because again, if you don't have young people, then you tell me who's gonna fight your battles, who's gonna do the laborious things, who's gonna be able to do the things when you're no longer strong and cocky and musty, you know, and can, you know, Slew a whole, you know, you know, I don't know, block of females. That that day is gonna come if you if if by the grace of Yahweh, Yeshua, you know that you'll live long enough. Elohim, I am, you know, the I am. If He allows you to live that long, 
you're going to be in a place where you're going to need the young people to help you. So you're compromising your own future because you're not thinking this thing out clearly. All right. Now, in terms of, you know, women, you know, what I'm saying, you know, who uh, have gotten so caught up in, you know, what I would call if this is my understanding of the feminist movement where that I don't need a man. Well, <laughs> maybe you don't need a man. Well, I, I, let, me, let me let me correct myself. No, you don't need a man, but it's so sure good to have one. Trust me on that. And again, if you're 19 or you're 25 or you're 30 year old, you know, you're smelling your ass and you, you know, you got the world, you know, you got all your lady friends, but well, well, they going to get old. Someone's going to get sick. And you're going to find yourself in a place where you got to go find a little small group somewhere who may be healthy enough to sit down outside with you for a few minutes. And maybe, maybe go to catch a movie with you. But if they don't have young people, then guess what? You know, there's nobody going to be at the movie. So you're going to be sitting at home, probably can't afford cable or whatever type of um, uh, available entertainment that's going to cost something. You won't be able to afford that, probably. Because you were so set upon being a feminist that you didn't need men and you could do it all by yourself. So you've cut all of your prosperity in half. Yeah, you cut your prosperity in half. Because you because if you had the right mindset and say, look, I'm not going to compete with a man. A man is not here to be my competition. A man is here to be my resource. Yeah, I said, I'd just like to be my resource. Not to take advantage of him, but to be my resource. What are the things that I can't do that he can do? That's a resource. And men vice versa. So I realized that there, there is a communication gap and there's damn sure a behavior gap going on right now. The problem is the gap is getting broader and broader. And I'm not, I'm not sure we're not thinking about the consequences here. You follow me? I think we're making decisions without thinking about the consequences. And, you know, for you men... You know, who was saying, I don't need no woman. I'm going to go my own way. Fine. But you know that, that that LGBTQ, right? Lesbian, gays, bisexual, transsexuals, queer. Maybe you ought to put an M on that. So let's call it LGBTQM. Because you don't want a woman. So that, you you, you know, I'm not calling you, 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 you gay. I'm just calling you going your own way. Because that's what they're doing. The lesbians are going their own way. The gays are going their own way. The, the transvestites are going their own way. The queers are going their own way. And I guess now the M, you're going your own way too. So why not add your name to that, to, to your acronym to that list? And this is the last thing I'll say about it. You know, I had a cousin who told me when I was about 17 years old, and um, I had this beautiful girlfriend, beautiful girlfriend, but... You know, I was smelling my little oats, you know, and I'm like, you know what, I, you know, if there's one, there's two. And I remember my cousin, he was an older gentleman. I was probably, again, about 15, 16. And my cousin, I think he's maybe like 28, 29. And I remember he came to visit us at my, you know, at, at our home. And he was looking up on the mantel, and there was a picture of me and my ex-girlfriend at the time, you know, high school, and uh, of our prom picture. He said, well, who is that? Uh, you know, I said, well, that's that's my girl. That used to be my girlfriend. But, you know, I, you know, I moved on. He said, hmm. Look pretty good to me. He said, don't she said, let me tell you something. Let me tell you something, Dale. If you don't want to, <laughs> I guarantee you somebody else will. And boy, when he said that, my stomach dropped to the goddamn floor. <laughs> I'm like, oh, shit. You know what I'm saying? In other words, he provoked me into to, to sensibility because I'm around it chest puffed out thinking I'm about something talking about who who I don't need and he said, he said fine somebody also want if you don't and I say that to all of you men out here who talking about going your own way fine go your own way but there are a bunch of other men like us that say glad more for us <laughs> thank you for listening DMG Gideon's Flight peace